Greetings, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stasia Bliss, where we talk about Kundalini awakenings and all things life force management. So sorry I missed you yesterday. I spent the day with my big sister and we had big talks. And after that talk, she said, please make a video about Kundalini and aging, like the stuff we talked about. So this video is for my sister and anyone else who's wondering about the aging process and what naturally occurs versus what can occur. And I say naturally because, you know, what's been occurring for humans and how that might change based on the shifts that we're in and the awakening of the planet. So before we get into that, I just want to say thank you for coming to my channel. I hope you will subscribe, like this video, share it, leave any comments below. I always put my website down below so you can see the things that I'm available to help you with. Coaching, classes. Um, my favorite thing to do is helping with rites of passage. Uh, ceremony is such a profound way that we can reinstate in the world and in our culture the understanding of evolution. And I don't mean the Darwinism type, I mean like the evolution of consciousness. Uh, the spiritual maturation and that's basically what this video is about but rites of passage ceremonies have been largely left out of western culture and as we reinstate them then we can begin to learn how to let go of old versions of self and open up to new versions of ourself which is what the awakening process is all about it's about um, growth <laughs> maturation Kundalini awakening is also called spiritual maturation. So as we talk about aging, it's interesting because um, generally speaking, and I did a video about this before, um, Kundalini and uh, midlife crisis are, are very similar in nature. Old paradigm world, disease and death paradigm world say midlife crises. Okay, even just the word itself, crises. Oh my gosh, I'm having a crises right now. I'm having a midlife crises right now. Like I was just going along doing my nine to five and driving my fancy car and going out to eat and having my mochaccino in the morning. And then suddenly I woke up and that's just not enough for me anymore. Midlife crises. This is like the typical thing. A lot of Hollywood movies are based around this. I got to change my life. Maybe there's spiritual seeking. Maybe you're getting a divorce or you leave or you go on a pilgrimage or whatever it is. This like shift right from the ordinary life to the new life, which is actually what's happening is a Kundalini awakening. Uh, the life force energy shoots up the spine, you get a new vantage point, a viewpoint on your life, you see the way you were doing things, it's not enough anymore, so now you need to learn a new way. And the whole process of cleansing out the chakras and all this that we talk about in all the videos is going on. So what usually follows a midlife crisis is, for women, menopause. Okay, and so my sister and I are around similar ages, and um, I haven't quite um, gone through that. She has, and um, so, but my exploration of that phase of life um, really is this idea of moving into wisdom, right? Moving in from a, an experiential place to a, a wisdom place, and if you look at that that means it's really a spiritual maturation. It's a maturation of consciousness. But more than that, it's going from a place, okay, a lot of people say, oh, I'm old and my body hurts and everything creaks and wait till you get old and you can't see or wait till you get old and fill in the blank, right? What really begins to happen in my perspective is we begin to become aware of the physical body like never before. So earlier in life, pre this awakening, and this can happen at any time now, it doesn't have to happen at 40, 50 years old, this can be happening to you at any age, okay? And that's why the medical industry is full of more and more conditions, because we don't really have a, a framework that works for people that says, hey, just having the sensation of your body where you didn't before doesn't mean something's wrong, necessarily not saying it's not, but I'm just saying, what if we had another way of looking at things that said, okay, 
before we go through the spiritual maturation, we're just really like in our mind and we have a body, but we're not super embodied. We're not like fully integrated as physical and spiritual beings. That's part of the goal of this reality is to integrate physical with spiritual. That would be Shiva and Shakti. That would be masculine and feminine fully coming together and that's empowered ascension. So if that hasn't happened yet, you can be like using your body and go along. They say ignorance is bliss, right? You're just going along. You're not really, oh, you bummed yourself out. Okay, let's fix that. But as you drop in more and more and you really embody this frame, you really bring your divinity, your awareness into this vessel. And that's where they say the saints will glow, right? Because more light, more wisdom, more intelligence is inhabiting the cells. The cells are being spiritualized, actually. So the more that happens, the more we're aware of density, the more we're aware of our physical organs and their functions. We're, we weren't really conscious of them before. So if you don't feel all your physical happenings in your body, and then you suddenly are aware of your digestive system, and all the gurgling and all the moving, you might say, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my stomach. What in the world? When what could really be happening is you suddenly are now just aware for the first time of your digestive system or any system. You could be the first time aware of your heart beating all the time and you think, oh my gosh, I'm having heart palpitations. When really you're just actually becoming aware of your heart for the first time or I'm feeling my nervous system do its thing. But since we don't have that awareness, we think what's wrong with my nervous system? I'm feeling shocks, but those shocks were going on all along. They just were going on unconsciously before. You follow me? So the spiritual maturation process is bringing greater awareness to physicality. Divine consciousness dropping into the physical. So if we can make the mental shift to that's what's happening and we start erasing the old languaging that says every time you feel something that something's wrong, you know, because we kind of are like, well, I don't really like to feel my body. If I feel my body, then uh, that's uncomfortable, right? If you've ever done plant medicines, if you've ever done psychedelics, the bad trips are when you don't have the mental capacity to see yourself through the first little bit of transition, right? And you're feeling yourself the most. That's the most uncomfortable time. But if you can make it through, you're like, holy cow, the divine energy in my body. And this is amazing. And a God moment and everything else. Well, we're having kind of like a slow motion psychedelic experience in the collective with this awakening. That's what psychedelics prepare you for actually is what that feels like. And you go through it really fast. And then you are having the opportunity to understand that enough to be a guide for yourself and others if you choose to as how this journey goes you get like a preview and the goal is to integrate that and be able to utilize that knowing to guide yourself through the process in slow motion now so all these phases are part of ascension. It's not just like got an escalator and you went up and now you're ascended and it's great and we're with God and yay. Like there's some discomfort with integrating feeling this body and taking this body with us spiritually. You know, and one thing that came up yesterday is the difference between, uh, you know, I can say um, somebody who believes this is the only life, which some Christians do, right? There's after this, there's heaven or hell or whatever. Um, and some who believe in reincarnation. And either way, you would say, um, if you don't get it right, like if you don't um, embody, um, well, some, at least the Mormons, they say we're, you have to be resurrected. You die, you leave your body, but then you need your body to be in the presence of God. You, you are resurrected like Jesus, because you can't be in the presence of God without the physical body. Now, not all Christians look at it completely that way, but I think that's pretty common. But in the um, 
reincarnation thing. It's like, it's actually, okay, I got to the end of my life and I'm dying and I'm going to see God. Oh no, you need your body to do that. Go back and try again. Get another body. Try again. Oh, you left your body? Try again. And so there's some benevolence there to get to try it as many times until you can bring your body with you. Because you actually need the body to be fully ascended. You need to have the physical frame. This isn't, you know, there's a lot of people saying, all oh, this, this isn't you. This is just the body, you know, like you are more than the body. Okay, you are more than the body, but the body is part of, of who you are. Part of this God manifestation. Okay, and I'm not saying there's not things beyond that, but part of this is embodied ascension. It is taking the physical, it is spiritualizing the cells. And so in this phase of that journey, a lot of what we call the aging process could be reframed into the spiritual maturation where now I'm becoming more aware of these things. And if they seem to be breaking down, well, if we shift the mindset around them and be like, how can I support myself in feeling myself more? Sometimes we need to self-nurture and that's what our bodies are asking for. The wisdom comes from listening to the body, nurturing, giving care, um, not just being like, well, the body's breaking down, we'll just let it go and wait to die. You know, like, okay, you can choose that route. That is a route. And that's the route that most humans have been taking for a long time. So we have a big groove, a big pattern of the death disease paradigm, but there is a different way. And the different way is embodied ascension, taking the body with you, spiritual maturation, kundalini awakening, recognizing these are part of the journey. How can I support myself? What mindset do I need to hold this? What, how else can I see what's happening to me? And remember, like quantum physics, if we apply it here in the spiritual term, says that if you're looking for something, you're going to find it. So it's why I opt out of going and getting checkups all the time because I'm not, I'm not wanting to find what they're looking for. I'm, I'm creating my reality as I go. And if I think something might be occurring, well, I'm going to utilize my mind and herbs and meditation visualization to create what it could be in different terms. Now, I'm not a medical practitioner. If that's the reality and the paradigm you are following, I am not suggesting or um, giving medical advice or diagnosing. Let me just disclaim right now. I'm from a different vantage point, from a spiritual perspective, giving a different perspective on what reality can look like should you choose that for yourself. And if you do, that's a responsibility. That's a, a self-responsibility and empowerment is self-responsibility. Empowerment isn't, I'm gonna do this much, but I can't do this much. I mean, you can have guidance and you can have help, but it's, recognizing that you are the source, that the source is in here, that in the silence, the answers can come. And if you're not to that point yet, then you're utilizing both until you can. Like until my son is able to manage healing his medical condition, he's using his healing modalities and that system until he can tip the scales. And for you, you have to judge that. You have a guide to help you judge that. I'm not simply saying don't use that paradigm anymore. I'm saying what if? What if we looked at aging this way as a maturation? Just a thought. And as you think on that, we move into this um, Ostara. The original word for Easter, um, the time that's celebrated of the resurrection so, of uh, the Christian Savior, Jesus, uh, but it's also a resurrection period opportunity, uh, well, in nature, nature's being resurrected from winter, but it's a spiritual opportunity to evolve one's consciousness, to resurrect the spiritual self 
you know, the tarot card judgment day to renew, to restore. We're about to go into Mercury retrograde tomorrow. So there's a revisiting, um, a remembering, uh, restoring, resurrecting, uh, reminding. And these eclipses are helping us look at how have I been thinking about myself? How have I been thinking about my relationship with myself and how I shine this Aries Libra axis? And as we come closer to the the total eclipse, the solar eclipse in Aries next Monday, not this one, that energy is intensified. And uh, an eclipse in Vedic um, is a thousand times your spiritual practice, right? A thousand times. It's an acceleration. It's a quickening. It's a portal for this awakening. So I hope you take advantage of that. It's a great time for readings. If anyone's interested, I always do those by donation. Um, I do recommend some kind of ceremony space for yourself to shift through this energy, support yourself. If I can be of any assistance to you, please do let me know. Otherwise, thank you for joining me. I love you and namaste.